देखें सिम्पलि बजनेस टक सौजन्े सीम्पल कल सहजे कल कर Welcome back. Good evening uh, to another episode of Simply Business Talk, where this week I'm really honoured to have one of the, if not the first, declared by the mainstream media, uh, the British Bangladeshi millionaire, and that was almost 20 years ago. So now he's 20 times, if not 40 times, a millionaire. So um, every second counts, <laughs> and I'm sure uh, he's thinking about the the next venture, which I'm sure he will share with us what he will be doing to make more millions. But tonight is our special guest, is no other than Mr. Mukim Ahmed, the owner, I guess, in, in many businesses, but the one that stands out, if you're ever in Brick Lane, is the iconic Cafe Naz. Once, a, as you've mentioned, in the 70s was a cinema, Na, cinema which, uh, I used to own, which you used to own, mm -hmm. uh, where in the olden days, where many of the bachelors would go and watch movies, and it was a place where they would meet their friends. Right. Um, and you kind of provided that entertainment. Sure. Uh, but we've learned from your uh, first seg segment that you were a, 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 a man who came to study. Yes. But you had the hunger for business. You succeeded from uh, electronic motor vehicles importing to Bangladesh. You then went had a, a travel agency uh, where your family had a claim to sh sort of not sh helping, but uh, uh, sort we made of made money out of money out of it. Sending people to England, England. Yes. and then you were then helping them to go back to yeah. reconnect to yes, their yes, families yes, in yeah. Bangladesh, and you helped to uh, first, uh, uh, I guess, bank monetary transfer. Yeah, yes, I uh, did. That you also well. did cargos. Yes. What was next in your venture? Well, when I was uh, exporting goods from here in Holland and Japan. I uh, started uh, a electrical wholesaling business here mm. for England. I used to have four uh, reps on the road. I was supplying uh, the whole of United Kingdom, Scotland, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, Manchester, Birmingham, everywhere. My mm. rep used to go. Mm. My delivery van used to go as well, and uh, that was a business which I ran for at, at least about 20 years. Mm. Uh, and I was the uh, biggest amongst the Muslims mm. in the trade, but there were many Indians in the trade. Mm. And uh, uh, only Bangladeshi in mm -hmm. the in the mm -hmm. trade, and that was very successful. I used to import watches from Hong Kong with my own brand, which was a ha brand Harper. Mm -hmm. I had 300 different models. Uh, and then uh, I, I had uh, televisions, uh, then small radios, all that with, with brand. Mm -hmm. I had about I think at least about five six hundred different lines I used to import. That was a very successful business. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I, I remember that particularly because yeah, 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 yeah. as a child, yeah. uh, I, I, I did go into that shop every yeah. now and then and buy yeah. a uh, radio from, from your shop right, in, in yes, Brick Lane, yes. so I remember that. Yeah, so mm. that became very successful really. I, I was distributing and I was supplying big, big companies as well. Mm. And then uh, misfortune struck me. I had gone through a lot of problems in life as well. Then I, we had a fire in that building and the whole uh, building was uh, mm. destroyed by fire. Mm. Uh, in 1993, I think I had a fire. Mm -hmm. Uh, big fire, I lost millions of pounds in then. Uh, it was all over the newspapers. I still mm. got the cuttings of yeah. th that time. Uh, in my building, I had 20 uh, factories, which was not mine. I used to rent out mm -hmm. and I was occupying about 14,000 square feet of space myself. Mm. So it was a quite a big operation. Uh, after that uh, fire, I almost lost everything. And again, I started after the fire, to I didn't rebuild, get the to rebuild, yeah, again. To rebuild it. Mm. I didn't get the insurance claim. The company which insured me uh, also insured other people, mm. and they were reinsurers. Right? They used to insure insur insurance companies as well. So basically, misfortune really st struck you quite badly. Oh, quite badly, and I didn't get a claim. I lost about mm. three and a half million. So how did you pick yourself up and move on to new ideas? Well, uh, what happened then? I then had a small shop which is Twenty One Brick Lane. Mm. I had this shop before. So I started uh, trading from there mm -hmm. so in a smaller way, and uh, I then, of course, was it was too small for me. The, mm -hmm. the business became too small. Uh, with the help of my uh, family again, my family gave me money to start mm -hmm. all over again, mm -hmm. and I started up. And now I have got a uh, uh, quite a sizable portfolio of uh, properties, mm -hmm. and my main business now is properties. Then. 
you know, trading. Mm. So now you, you've been very successful in acquiring properties in the heart of the Bangladeshi communities. Yes. Uh, quite a sizable chunks. Uh, yes. We won't go into the full disclosure. Yes, okay. But uh, what did you kind of, uh, how did that come about? I mean, from electronic to travel, as I said, the list is endless. Where did you see the opportunity that bricks and mortar was a f sound investment? I mean, is that something it's you studied or just no, that? It's just, it's, it's just happened to me because if you remember, I used to own the freehold of the Nas cinema and mm. I used to also own the freehold of the building I, I was in. Mm. So like I said, necessity is the mother of invention. Mm. I was, I was, I won't say forced, I was compelled to buy those properties freehold because mm. I had a lot of money then. Mm. I had deposits and all that and all sure. that. I was very fortunate. Mm. Uh, I made money out of a lot of different tra uh, trades mm. in those days. You know, I, you would come and now ask me to open a uh, grocery shop, I would help you to open a grocery mm -hmm. shop. I, you want to open a sari shop, I would help because I had the means mm -hmm. and I would help mm -hmm. people and I would sure, try and sure, do it sure. myself as well. Mm. Uh, I, if you remember, I also used to have a record shop. Mm. I used to have the cinema and the record shop as well. I used to bring in artists from Bangladesh and produce records here, mm -hmm. you know, and then sell the records as well. I've mm. got the CDs and records yeah, even yeah, now, okay. you know, nowadays. So, uh, the the success for me was because I was uh, curious, mm -hmm. right? And whenever I saw an opportunity, I would take it, right? And most of the time, I would I'd be successful. Mm -hmm. Like after the fire, I started up restaurant trade. I was not in the restaurant trade at all because mm -hmm. everybody used to say that uh, everyone in Banglad uh, Bangladesh is are in restaurant trade. Mm -hmm. So I kept myself away. I, w I went into electronics, right? Uh, and I wanted to be different. Like even, you know, my family used to have uh, fisheries my, before I was born, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And they used to, uh, there were times when people said, why didn't you import fish, right? I said, no, I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. So some things I wanted to keep away from sure. the normal tradition, you mm -hmm. see, and mm -hmm. move into something different. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in sort of the different types of business that you did, yes. is there one business that you felt you wish you'd done? Well, even with the say, for instance, the restaurant business, mm. I went in 1994, I started my cafe and business. Mm. Then I had eight restaurants, I did eight restaurants and among the, uh, am among the restaurant trade, I mm. also became a, a force because mm. uh, if you read the uh, Curls book, they gave me an honor of being the, f the best chain, right? So I went into restaurant trade and very quickly became mm. very successful in restaurant trade, mm. right? Yeah, because you, a you, uh, lot of Bangladeshis have five or six or more restaurants yeah, yeah, yeah. but are different names yeah. for different reasons. Yes. But you started a chain, you a chain. started a, a brand, brand, a, a brand. brand. Yes. Um, and, and, and that sort of was wherever you went, I mean, yeah. you know, but then the iconic one yeah. was Brick Lane. No, then I had same brand uh, in Cardiff, mm. I've got one still in uh, Cambridge, Chelmsford I had, mm. Horsham I had, uh, Lewisham I had, right? Mm. Yeah. Then uh, Broccoli I had, mm. so I had, uh, I had them all over the place with the same brand, mm. same the food, the menu, everything mm. same. Sure. So it's a difficult thing, but I, I became quite successful uh, in those days as well. Mm. So what I am trying to say that because I concentrate on something, what I when I take up something, I mm. really concentrate on it, mm. and therefore I I, I do better. Mm. And so I would want to tell everybody that when you are doing a business, try and concentrate on it, mm. right? Focus on it. And then, then you can achieve whatever you want to achieve. So, in terms of the, uh, as I was saying, sort of one business that you wish you had done, is there a business that, I mean, we've had a list of endless of businesses that has. I've got about 20 companies. 20 I have, yeah. companies. But is there one business that, in those sort of 40 years of Britain, being in Britain, yeah. that you wish you started or you wish you thought about it first? I think uh, you're, you're going to, uh, I'm going to give my secrets away. Mm. The best business I think I've ever done in my life is the property business mm. right and and i would i would ask and uh, i would advise mm. my viewers mm. here now that if you can go into properties buy the property buy a property and forget about it mm. just leave it there because as you know i have gone ups and downs mm. and because i had some properties wherever i f whenever i fell mm. i fell onto my properties and then it gave me a, a uh, the boost again boost the again. boost again and I have realized it late in my life that mm. I should have gone into properties mm. long time ago, mm. right? My father used to buy a lot of land in Bangladesh, right? I, uh, I think I've got that gene in me as well. Sure. But I wish I had realized that before, 
then I would have been mm. more. Well, I guess yeah. you, you've been successful. You are concentrating and yeah. because you, like you said, you put a lot of effort, a lot of time into whatever you've, you're doing. Yes. And, and because of that, you've been successful. Mm. And so sometimes other things had to wait. Yes. But then when you do take up those challenges, um, we, I know from personally your vast uh, sizable properties and mm. sometimes you have to walk half the street before you realize someone else owns that <laughs> uh, 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 property because you own the other half. Yes. So that's been a very successful uh, adventure. But we also know that in that process, it hasn't just been about Mukim Ahmed himself. You have, and if I can say this to the viewers and share that, that you've also taken people along, yes. you've served the community, yes. uh, you've been a, a figure in, in the Bangladeshi community in the heart of the Brick Lane, and you've been involved in, I guess, entrepreneurial organization, sure. uh, and notably the Bangladeshi, British Bangladeshi Chambers of Commerce. Right. You were one of the founding members, yes. uh, you served your time, you took time out, yes. and last week you were duly unopposed elected yes. to the, the third position. time. Mm, for the position, for tell us for, for, for the third time. For the third time, yes. Tell us about what you will do differently sure. in this new position. Sure. sure. I I look at myself and s say that I have done my bits in life, right? Mm. I have. My son is now. He's all settled up as well. He's he worked for Goldman Sachs. Now he's going to work for J uh, J P Morgan. And after maybe ten years of discipline and organization mm. experience, he might come back to my business mm. and run that business. Mm. Or he, if I retire t tomorrow, then he will part-time run my business. Mm. My daughter is uh, w uh, going to work for uh, Price Water Scooper. Mm. That is also settled and done, right? So I have done my bit for my family. Mm. Now I want to do for my community because mm. I want to have, uh, die with the satisfaction that it's not only me, mm. uh, I have done it for myself. Now I I've done it for my family as well. Mm. So I've got time, energy, and money as well mm. to help my community, sure. right? So Therefore, mm. coming back to the chambers, I could see the chamber was in tatters. We had some problems because mm. there are in our chamber, British Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce, they are all tigers. Because mm. you can imagine, sure, so they are all very, very successful people. Mm. Like if, if I can name so many names. Mm. Yeah, no, we, we will bring uh, we will bring some of those people, if not yeah, all of them, onto yeah, the yeah. show. And, and so, to so among these tigers, there is always confrontation and always, uh, you know, difference of opinion and all that. Mm -hmm. So I want to bring them all together this time, right? Because we, I feel, and some of my fellow directors will feel as well, because we've gone a bit behind, mm. uh, right, than what we uh, were uh, before. So I want to put them all together, harness their energy, bring all the energy together, mm. and do something positive for the community. First of all, uh, like uh, with the chambers, we'll have a newsletter, right? We'll in mm. increase our um, mm. membership base, mm. uh, right? We will keep our members uh, uh, give them the, all the informations, mm. uh, informative informations they will give them so that they can uh, get help and cooperation in if ever they want from ourselves, sure. right? And we will even give them uh, not only advice uh, but like last practical time, solution, practical, practical solutions solution. as well. Mm. Uh, uh, there was a time when we were uh, networking and mm. promoting a business, mm. right? Mm. Uh, uh, so, that sure. so that so that they, 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 they mm. can uh, advertise their business, Excellent. right? Uh, do so, what you uh, wanted to do uh, in some respect is to sort of, and if I can say this with all due respect to your uh, fellow directors, yes. is that when you are a successful British Bangladeshi tiger in the sense of being a successful businessman, you're focused on your own business. But Hamza, you have become successful, you are successful, and now you feel that your children have settled, you now have the time, the luxury, and the ability to concentrate on yeah. developing the community. Yes. So the message is loud and clear yes. that under the presidency of the Bangladeshi Chambers, British Bangladeshi Chambers, Mr. Mukim Ahmed is going to be focused and make the Chambers a success as yes. he has done for the last 40 years yes. his various businesses. Uh, viewers, I, I I'm really am uh, in a very positive note uh, to end this uh, segment because 40 years of success in, in his own ventures and now he's concentrating his, for the third time, he's, go, he's become the president of the British Balance Chambers of Commerce. So I believe the organization will be in a good hand because he has proven that wherever he puts his attention, that he makes that project, that business, that entrepri entrepri uh, enterprise a success. So I'm very confident that the, the, the Bangladeshi Chambers is in a very good hands. And so join us for the uh, next segment where we will be talking more about the man behind the success. Stay with us on Simply Business Talk. Apnara Dekchen, Simply Business Talk.
সৌজন্যে সিম্পল কল সহজে কল করুন আপনজনের কাছে থাকুন 0745-3242-3242